As .NET developers, I'm sure we've all seen app settings files that are just packed of production connection strings and secrets that should not be in your project. They should be somewhere safe. So I'm going to show you guys how to take your app settings file from something that looks like this to something much cleaner and safer that looks like this. And I'm going to do it by using managed identities and Azure Active Directory. So let's jump in. So before we jump into the code and actually doing everything in Azure, I just want to quickly talk about what are managed identities. They are basically automatically created identities in Azure AD that then the Azure services can just use instead of needing credentials. And all of this is handled in Azure and then they are just passed along between the Azure services that need them. And they are honestly super quick to set up just a few clicks here and there in the actual service. And you can get this working very quick. And there are two types of managed identities, system assigned, which is enabled on the Azure service itself and lives for the lifespan until you delete that Azure service or user assigned, which is a standalone Azure resource independent of a service. And it can then be assigned to many different ones. And if you delete, you know, a given service that it was assigned to the, you know, the user assigned identity still lives on and it has nothing to do with the service that it was kind of assigned to. So kind of one to many versus one to one. And for this tutorial, we will be doing system assigned. But now with a little bit better knowledge of what these identities are, let's now move into the actual project and let me show you guys how to do it in the code and in Azure. Okay, guys, we are now at our .NET 7 API. Let me quickly run it to just show you guys what endpoints we have. It's a very straightforward API. We have two gets, a post, put, and a delete. Let me just run get teams so you guys can kind of see what information we're pulling here. Just a bunch of countries um, and that's about it. And it is connecting to this database right here. Let me show you guys. And this is what we have. This is basically what we're pulling. So this is what locally we have. Um, and then I already went ahead and created a bunch of things in Azure that we're going to need. So I already went ahead and created the Azure Key Vault, a sample database in Azure as well. We have our resource group and our Azure subscription. So all of this stuff is created. And going back to our API, I now want to go show you guys kind of the issue and the problem that we're trying to solve. So I don't want my app settings to look like this. I don't want to have my production connection string. And let's just say you went ahead and you watched my Azure Key Vault video, which if you haven't, highly recommend it up here if you want more information specifically on Azure Key Vault. But let's say you now know, you're like, oh, I want to use Key Vault, right? But you instead ended up doing something like this, where it's like, maybe this is gone, but now you're still in the project giving all your secret information to connect to your Key Vault that then gives you the production string. So like, you, you didn't really solve anything. You just kind of moved the goalpost a little bit. So how do we fix this? How do we kind of clean up our program.cs to where it's not giving, you know, giving away in our project all the secure stuff and we can just put this all in Azure? Well, let's start doing that. The first thing you guys need to make sure is that in your project, uh, in your NuGet packages, you're going to need Azure Identity. You're going to need Azure Security Key Vault Secrets. You're going to need this one. And then you're also going to need to have Microsoft extensions configuration, Azure Key Vault. So like I said, what we don't want to do is from our app settings file to be, you know, pulling our production connection string. We don't also want to be pulling all of this stuff. So let's start removing things. So we don't want this because we're going to be pulling it from Azure Key Vault. And then we don't want all of this because we don't want to have our sensitive information. All we want to do is we just want to have our key vault URL and then for all the Azure AD to take care of actually getting the credentials and making the connections. And let me go ahead and show you guys in the Azure key vault that we already have, we do have our production connection string. So that secret has already been created, but I've not gone ahead and create the web app. I'm going to do that in a little bit. So now that I've removed kind of all these values from here, Basically, that means that I can just remove all of this. And since in our key vault, we already have the production connection string, we should not need it here. So I can remove all that confidently and look how our app setting starts looking much safer. There's no security risk in this because all the connections, everything's going to be done in Azure. So this already is looking great. And now in our program.cs, we're going to have to change how we connect from our API to Azure key vault. So instead of having this client secret credential, what we're going to have is we're going to have this, a key vault client, and that's what we're going to create. Let's just bring in Microsoft Azure key vault right here, pull that in. And then for Azure service token provider, we need to pull in the app authentication, I believe. Yes, app authentication. 
So now this is basically creating our key vault client here. The next thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to need to change how we are adding Azure Key Vault. Because we are not using these credentials anymore, we need to do a new default Key Vault secret manager. So that is basically just going to be the only thing here. And we can just remove all of this. So all of that can be gone. And then this credential is going to be just another default as well. Because all of this is going to be done automatically by Azure. So we can get rid of this. And now we are connecting to Azure Key Vault using literally only the Key Vault URL. And these are all the changes that we had to make in the code so that our project still grabs our production connection string from Azure Key Vault. And look how beautiful our app settings file looks. Nothing secret, no security risk in here. We don't have to worry about anyone accidentally pushing all this stuff. No, everything is in Azure. So now speaking of Azure, let's go ahead and create our web app and actually use managed identities to make the connection between our services and grab that production connection string when we deploy this API. Okay, so now that we're at the Azure portal, like I said, we already have all of this stuff set up, our resource group, Azure subscription, our key vault, and our SQL database and SQL server. So now let's go ahead and create the app service for our API. We're gonna go in here, click create, resource group, select the one that we already have. Uh, let's say .NET, seven api yt that's going to be the name we're going to select runtime stack of .NET seven code windows go down here uh, i'm just going to do free for this video and review and create and i'll be right back once it's done now that our web app has been created we need to do just one thing and that is we need to go down to identity and we're going to click on and then we're just going to save that Enable system assigned managed identity. Yes, this is what we are doing and we want to register it to the Azure AD Click yes And now that it's enabled you should see something right here And this is basically going to allow the web app to be found by Azure Key Vault or any other service This is what we had talked about earlier So now this is going to allow us to give an access policy to this web app from Key Vault so that they can talk in Azure without me needing to give them the credentials or any other real information past just the URL of the Key Vault. So now that I've created this, we can now go back to our Azure Key Vault that as you guys remember, if I go to secrets, has our production connection string. We're gonna go to access policies and we now need to create an access policy, like I just said, to our web app. So in create, we're gonna go down here to key and secret management. These are fine. Click next. And here, now we got to go find that web app. So .NET 7, select, you know, the web app that you just gave that managed identity. Click next, next again, and now create that access policy for it. And with this access policy, we've now established that connection between the Azure Key Vault and our web app. And you guys can see how easy it is. So we've used now managed identities to make that connection. And just with this, it allows us to clean up our app settings file and we do not need to have any, you know, secure things in our project. It's all been moved to Azure. So now let me actually demo this for you guys so I can prove to you guys that it works as it should. But right before I do that, if you guys have found this video helpful so far, I'd appreciate it if you guys dropped a like on this video so it can spread to more developers on YouTube. Thank you. Now that we're back at our project, I wanna make sure that you guys see exactly what happens obviously locally with the API when I do get teams. So if I do get teams locally, we are gonna get those 10 uh, teams as we should, because if we go back to the database and on our local, we have 10 countries, but on our Azure database, we only have one. So that's how we're gonna to prove to you obviously that we are using managed identities, grabbing the production connection string and connecting to our production uh, database in Azure. So let's close this. Let's go grab our publishing profile from Azure now. Now that we're here, I'm going to download the publishing profile so I can, you know, push and deploy from Visual Studio. So now that I downloaded it, I'm going to go right click and click publish. Click my import profile next. And now I'm going to go find it in my downloads. So it's this one. Open it, finish. And it should be able to import everything here. And once this finishes, we should be ready to publish. So let's go quickly back here. Again, our app settings file is only gonna have the URL to Key Vault and only has our local DB, does not have anything else. And in our is production, what we're only doing here is grabbing that Key Vault value and then Azure AD is taking care of all the other connections and then all we're doing down here is going into the secret client, which is Azure Key Vault and grabbing that production connection string, which if we go back here, 
let's go back to our key vault is the one secret that we have here so going back here it is this one and it is right here now that we have the publishing profile set up we now can just click publish but right before i needed to go in and actually update the key vault url and i already did that and now we're going to go back to the program and i want to be able to use swagger ui for the, this api whenever i push it to azure because it just makes hitting those endpoints a little bit easier so i can quickly show you guys the data that we're pulling so that we are properly connecting to the production database uh, so we just need to enable that but now that that's done we can now publish and continue with the demo so as you guys can see we have now deployed our api successfully to azure and i was able to go backslash swagger to go to our nice little swagger ui page to hit my endpoint so everything's good in the back end so now let's actually test this out so we already ran the api locally so we were able to see the data there now let's try this out and if everything works we should only be pulling mexico because that's the only line of data we have in our production database and then that would mean that key vault the managed identity and everything works as is and if we go down here we're going to see that we are so we are successfully connecting getting our production connection string from azure key vault using managed identities and again the api that i published has an app settings file that looks like this no secrets nothing for the key vault that could be you know used to access it and no production connection string here as well and that is how you can take advantage of managed identities to really clean up your app settings file be a better dotnet developer and not have all those secrets just laying around in that file and do things the proper and a better way and now that we've gone over how to secure your app secrets don't you want to know how to also protect your api from bad actors once it's up and running well, if you do, go watch this video on how to implement JSON web tokens in your .NET API.